Oof, that box office, though. Ridley Scott once again takes another crack at directing to show he's as good as he once was by bringing the real-life account of historical events to the silver screen, this time a retelling of the second-to-last government-sanctioned duel in France. Jean, played by Damon, is a hard-headed and honor-bound knight who is best friends with Jacques, played by Ben Swallow. This friendship reaches a tism once Jean's wife Marguerite publicly claims that Jacques raped her. And since nah uh doesn't work as a defense, Jean's claim for a duel is given blessing by the king. So be prepared to sit through two and a half hours of the same exact story over and over again until we finally get to see what almost no one paid to see. Firstly, the battle sequences are alright. Practical effects dominate this film, helping you feel the power of the armored cavalry or weight of the soldiers smashing each other. However, while they are close up putting you in the action, the camera is in your face like the paparazzi, so you don't see the scope of the battles, which makes the more important camera work feel cheap. And before you can digest what you're watching, the battles just end. Every single one of them just stops mid-thrust and runs away bashfully into the night. It didn't even take the time to smear my makeup before pushing rope. And before I knew it, we were time-skipping. What the fuck? I'm still processing the moment of impotence. You can't just dump me off seven years in the future. Oh, well, are we going too fast for you? No, not really. I can keep up with it, but any faster and we're going to pass up McFly. Oh, well, in that case, we'll retread every single thing you just saw from Chapter 1, but now from Jacques' perspective. Wait, what? Everything? This is similar to how Wrath of Man handles its story. Wrath of Man tells a parallel series of events that connect later for a fluid progression. The last duel practically duplicates everything you see from Chapter 1 to Chapter 2 with little in the way of variation. And if that wasn't enough, it goes over the story once again for Chapter 3 from Marguerite's perspective. I don't want to see three versions of the same fucking party. If anything, showing three perspectives with certain overlap erases the mystery of who was telling the truth. Scott should have taken a page from Spielberg and focused the story on A to B. Keep it simple and straightforward. Instead, it's a convoluted mess that didn't need to be this dense. Maybe that is a little unfair to Scott, since he didn't write this. Not that he's known for being much of a writer, but Damon and Affleck are the ones who wrote it, so if you have some long-suppressed nostalgia out of the ham and cheese combo that was these two from the 90s, well, well, look no further, because they're back. Affleck is here for a check like Michael Caine was for Jaws the Revenge. The rest of the actors do give good performances, and the writing is actually pretty solid. This is where I clash with the film hard. Pretty much everything is above average, but never quite great. Case in point, the actors can't do an accent to save their lives, like they took lessons from Elizabeth Olsen, which only compounds the already gloomy mood of the film. Every one and thing is as depressed as the gray filter. Where are the vibrant fields and lush forests of France? This whole movie lacks more color than Castlevania. Which is funny to bring up, because yes, I will tackle the rest of the series soon, but no one here seems to age. 16 years pass, but Marguerite, Pierre, Jacques, you name it, they all look the same. This one is tough to go over, because I don't think The Last Duel is as good as people say. The core elements I focus on, like writing, plot, and choice, are all solid here, but so many other things, most notably the way the story is told, undermines the narrative at large. I say The Last Last Duel sits most fitting with a middling rating. What you want, it doesn't really give, and what you get is not really all that thought-provoking. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand you shouldn't blindly believe all men or women. If we did, a lot of people would be convinced that you caused her to stab you in the gut because you didn't know what you did wrong. Besides, what even is an anniversary? Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of Daniel Craig's final mission as Bond in No Time to Die over there, and I'll see you in the next video.